If what your preachers, teachers, and family and friends taught you about money was true, I think everyone would be rich. There are nine specific myths that hold people back when it comes to money. It's time to break those. Myth number seven, spend as little on insurance as possible. Look, there's only two things you do with insurance. You either you know, buy it and transfer risk or you retain the risk yourself. I have a buddy, Darren, that argues with me on this. He says, no, you can avoid risk, but some things you just can't avoid and it changes behavior. How can you make protection productive? That's the question here. And how can you minimize your cost of insurance so you have a lot more wealth? See, because my mom, when we were growing up, I remember her writing the bills and sending checks out back in those days. And she's like, we're insurance poor. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, all the money we earn goes to insurance. I thought, those SOBs, that sucks. I hate insurance companies. What I found is none of us really hate insurance. We all just hate paying for it. If insurance didn't cost us anything, I think we'd all be cool getting as much as we possibly can. So look, if you don't transfer risk, you have insurance, but it's called so-called self-insurance. And that's a complete myth because you're either insured or not insured. And if you have to use your assets to insure something, you're spending at least a dollar for that dollar of insurance. Let me give an example. Let's just say that you went out and you paid off your mortgage. So now you have a free and clear home. You don't have to have homeowner's insurance. But if you drop that homeowner's insurance and it saves you $2,000 a year and your home is worth $500,000, well, guess what? You now have to have $500,000 locked away somewhere. And do you think you could maybe produce more than $2,000 a year off $500,000? I think with measly and you know savings accounts maybe, but even if you look at better investments that might not be fully liquid, well, if they're not fully liquid, meaning you can invest it in a business or in a person or in an idea or in a strategy that might lock that capital up for periods of time, you would now be completely exposed if something happened to your home. And if something happened to your home, you would now derail yourself or destroy that money you have to just rebuild it. So sometimes the cheapest way to insure is to buy as much as possible. What the hell do I mean by that? What I mean is if these companies are truly efficient and effective what they do, and I'm gonna show you how to design it properly, you can transfer risk to them so you free up your cash to use, to invest, and to grow, and you're gonna spend less than a dollar for a dollar of insurance, where if you use your own cash, you're gonna spend at least a dollar of insurance for that dollar of protection in the so-called self-insured world. So how do you get as much insurance as you can? and then lower your cost economically and improve your situation. Well, first off, when you transfer risk, it definitely brings out peace of mind. I bought this 3.5 Acura RL. It was the first car I ever bought. I didn't know it was insured because I was on mom and dad's insurance before. And when I took it off the lot, I started to go, this isn't insured and I hated every driver. I didn't enjoy the drive to get into the house because I thought it was gonna get crashed and that I was now gonna have this loan and I'm gonna have to pay that back and I don't even have the car I want. So that became a destructive mindset. Like what if you had the most amazing car? Let's say you loved Bentleys and you bought a Bentley, but you also had a beater truck. The Bentley wasn't insured, but the beater truck was, and you had to make a long trip. Which car are you probably going to drive? Well, you might be too worried about, hey, if something happens to my precious Bentley, then I'm screwed because it's not insured, so I guess I'll buy the beater truck. See, whether you claim on insurance or not, whether you have the incident or not, there is still value there. What I'm trying to do is free up your cash so it can be truly invested and grow instead of in this scarcity thinking, trying to minimize your cost of insurance and use your own cash. See, one moment of scarcity in your mind can crowd out prosperity thinking. When I was driving my car, what if I would've had my best financial idea, but instead I'm worried about every other driver? Being self-insured means keeping enough cash on hand to equal what you'd be insuring, plus enough to replace it at full value. That's a lot of cash that you can't do anything with if you actually wanna use it. So let's talk about this. How can you actually insure your assets and improve your financial structure? Well, one, you can start to lower your cost of insurance if you do remove duplication. An example of duplication would be if you have a car and a home, you can actually add an umbrella policy to the car and the home, have it cover multiple cars or even multiple homes if you have multiple homes with one policy and get the minimum required for that umbrella policy to kick in. I've seen people have more than minimum required and that's just a duplicate coverage. So an umbrella or excess liability coverage would be one way of doing that. Or let's say you have enough cash on hand. And you don't need short-term disability because if you were disabled for a short period of time, you'd have enough cash to handle it. This is how savings accounts can provide for you. You could drop that short-term insurance and only go with long-term insurance because the first dollar of insurance that you purchase is the most expensive. 
a low deductible or no deductible will be a more expensive policy because you're more likely to use it. And they care more about the use of the policy than how big the claim is. So what we want to do is minimize the frequency and maximize the protection. Let me say that merely simply. Protect the catastrophic, never the inconsequential. Take care of anything small by not having insurance. If it doesn't derail you or destroy you, if you can write a check for it and go to sleep that night, you don't have to worry about it. And then transfer all the catastrophic things because the least expensive dollar of insurance is the last dollar. Like a million dollar umbrella might cost a couple hundred dollars a year because the likelihood of tapping into that millionth dollar is really small. But a low deductible of zero or a hundred dollars on a car might raise your premiums 50, 60, 70 dollars a year because you're more likely to use it. So don't use insurance for things that you can handle on your own. Use it to protect your legacy, to protect your mindset, and to transfer major risk, not the minimum risk. So let's look at three ways to maximize insurance. One is understanding human life value versus property value. Property value are cars, their homes, are the things that we touch, right, and that we see. Human life value is human beings. That's disability, that's death, that's liability. See, human life value is usually underprotected, and property value is usually protected pretty well because it's pretty easy to see. But what's more valuable, you or your property? So start by human life value protection. So liability, disability, medical, and life insurance, but you want to get long-term elimination that you can afford as have enough cash before the disability kicks in, right? Or umbrella policies that only have minimum limits of liability on the car and home when that kicks in so it's more efficient. And then medical, if you can get health savings accounts or you can put money in pre-tax or you can minimize the premiums that are through co-ops or things like that so you keep more of what you make that way. And then life insurance, it's really about what would be the economic loss if something happened to you. Make sure you have the right amount protecting that to replace your income because even if you have millions of dollars of life insurance, that might not be that much money. Think about if you could never earn another dollar the rest of your life. Would you be okay with how much life insurance you have being your entire way to fund that future? So how much would it take to make sure your heirs either can live the same lifestyle or even a better lifestyle? But you can have caveats where they can't remarry and stuff like that and get the money, but you can have a little bit of control over that through a trust. Second thing is now you can look at protecting your assets. So your homeowner's insurance, right? Your car insurance, these types of things. You just wanna make sure that you have the limits of liability even between the two higher deductibles overall, so you're not paying too much, and that you have the replacement value with your homeowner's insurance, so if something happens, they replace all the property at what it would cost to replace it, not the actual cash value, so replacement versus actual cash value, and get a video showing like everything you have is an in inventory in the home, keep it in the cloud or outside of the house, so if anything happens, you have proof of what you had because I, I, I met with a doctor back in 2002 in Seattle and he had a cabin burned down, had no documentation because it was brand new and there was an issue with how it was built and so it took him forever to get that back. I had a video guy that had went and taken an inventory of all of his property and when his apartment complex burned down, he was the first one to get the money back and got the most money back of anyone there because he had it documented. So insurance becomes permission for you to invest and utilize your money instead of having your money become your insurance in so-called self-insured. You're either insured or you're not insured. Insure the catastrophic, not the inconsequential, because if you have homeowner's insurance in this example, you can now go invest that money rather than using your money to protect your home. Use insurance for what it's meant for as a permission slip to utilize your money. And then finally, insure the right things Insure the right things. Don't insure things that you can write a check for that wouldn't infringe upon your mind and are inconsequential because it's costly and it's unnecessary and it's inefficient. You know, you can learn a lot more about this because this chapter is a big deal. I've had very savvy financial people read this chapter and be like, oh, I never thought of insurance this way, of transferring risk and being permission to utilize my cash or freeing up my mind so I can think more abundantly and not be in scarcity and fear and doubt and worry all the time. So you can learn more about this in Killing Sacred Cows. So insuring the right things for you means learning what matters to you. You don't want to be stuck worrying about your assets and your life when by simply insuring those things could have taken care of that worry and eliminated that so you'd be more abundant. And start investing your time and energy in places that will bring you even greater returns as you become more of an investor rather than a Scrooge-like saver. Now you have the knowledge to transform your thoughts into profits and build the life that you love. If you want to learn more on this topic, check out my video on financial planning.